Hello Floss Tube, it's Kate Madame Ice and welcome back to my channel. This is Floss Tube number five and I want to say welcome to anyone who's never been here before. I'm very happy that you've stumbled upon me and I'm very happy to be sharing my stitchy life with you. And to anyone who's coming back again, I'm so happy to see you back again and thank you so much for watching me. I want to say a couple quick thank yous right off the bat. Uh, the first one is going to be for Joe. I can't say your last name, Joe. I think it's Gregior, Gregior. Maybe it's fancy like Gregiore. I'm not really sure. I'm going to put it right here. It's going to be another Kyle Reckemeyer situation. I really don't know how to say your name. But thank you so much uh, for your shout out. Uh, second thank you I want to give is for Amy Loves Toads. Amy, if you're watching, I just want to say I love you. That's all I need to say to you. I love you. I can't wait to hear from you again. And then uh, the third one that I want to say thank you to is Miss Southern Ladybug. Thank you so much for your shout out and your kind words. Uh, I just, I love watching all three of your guys' videos and uh, I'm very happy that you all like to hang out with me too every once in a while. So, next up, I want to tell you guys just a little tiny life update here. I am so happy right now. I have been on rotating shift work for three years now, which means I haven't slept a normal night in three years almost. And it just doesn't work for me very well. So I am uh, starting tomorrow. I get a day job for a couple months. I have a temporary day job that came up and I get the opportunity to work at it. So I am so excited. I can't even explain how happy I am for the prospect of having a routine and a normal sleep schedule for a little bit. Um, I just can't even. So I'm super excited and happy right now because I just can't wait. Uh, the job itself, I'm not super looking forward to it. It's going to be kind of a boring job, I think. It's a lot of technical writing. You know what? I, I think I'll probably learn some things from it and mostly I'll get to actually see my husband on a regular basis again. I'm just so excited, but... So a little bit of a life update. And of course, I hope that I get a little bit more stitching time now that I'll have a normal schedule. Maybe I won't be so tired all the time. Hopefully. Hopefully that's a plus. We'll see. So, um, okay. So next I want to show you guys a little bit of haul. I've done pretty good. I'm trying to cut back a little bit like many of us are here at the beginning of the year cut back a little bit on our spending haven't been doing a super great job but eh, it's less than I've had in the last videos so here we go the first one I want to show you is spooky countdown from the primitive hair I think it is just so cute oops sorry that was out of the frame uh, I'm not really sure. I think that I would probably do it like this all together in one instead of like this with all the pillows. I just think this is more my style. I don't know when I'm going to get to this. Probably not for a very long time, but we'll see, I guess. Uh, so there it is. Primitive hair, spooky countdown. I got this from my friend Susan, who's opening the shop. Uh, I got it, ordered it off her online shop, which is Fire Poppies. I will put it down below. A little bit of an update on that. It sounds like she's honing in on some good locations here in the Charleston area to open up her brick and mortar, hopefully this summer. I am super excited. For now, it's super nice to have someone who can just go ahead and order anything 
that I want or need for me right now, <laughs> or she has a lot of it on her site. She has a lot of really interesting things that I don't see very often on other people's sites. So uh, I would go check her out. She's got some cool stuff. Oh, I noticed uh, Pam and Steph, Pam started stitching, or this week she spun on her wheel the lighthouse, the see-through lighthouse design. Uh, I forget who it's by. Mm, yeah, I'm not going to remember who it's by, but she started stitching on that and that chart Susan has on her site. So she's got the cut through lighthouse along with a bunch of other cut throughs. I helped her kind of organize then the other day. It, they're all super cute. So if you like that design, there's a lot more that are very similar to that. There's a cut through castle. There's a cut through cruise ship. There's a cut through uh, school. I can't remember. There's a whole bunch of cut throughs. There's a whole series of them and they come as kits. So if you're interested in Pam's cut through lighthouse, I would highly encourage you to go check out Fire Poppies. I'll go ahead and put the designer and maybe a picture of the cut through lighthouse up here so that you can see what I'm talking about but I did get this through her website and it works just fine uh, another thing that I got from her website is these cute needle minders I have two of them so uh, I think they're from hmm who makes them it's flamingo something I want to say flamingo toes which is super cute but I'm not sure if that's right at all. For now, I'm going to call her Flamingo Toes. Hmm. I don't really remember. But these are super cute and super well-made metal needle minders. And they've got super strong magnets. So here's the first one. It's an adorable... Let me see if I can get it to focus. There we go. It's an adorable little bike with some flowers in the front of it and I just think it's the cutest thing. I don't have any project in mind for this needle minder. However, I think it's adorable. Next up, let's see if it's, fo yep, it's focused still on here. So this is a little hedgehog with some flowers. Mm. Isn't he just adorable? And of course I had to put him on my hedgehog style, which I have not finished yet, which Gerald has finished. I can't. I've been too slow on it. But anyways, this cute hedgehog goes right on it. So I guess it's fine that I haven't finished it yet so I can use this cute angle minder. There we go. Focus back. So, okay. And then the last thing that I'm going to show you right now, the rest of it's kind of wrapped up into my whips and things. But uh, the next one I want to show you is... Uh, I won, I won a giveaway from Arlene Cohen, who is works by ABC, and she allowed the winners, I think there was three of us, to go onto her site and choose anything um, that she's designed, and we could choose any design and she would send it to us. So, I chose this uh, canvas work. Let me take it out of the package. I chose canvas work square number four. I've never tried canvas work and I, I think it's really pretty. And I've just never tried it and I'm interested in trying it. So I decided I would get her canvas work square. I think it's really gorgeous. I think I tried very hard not to pay attention to the colors of her canvas work squares. You know, she's obviously got at least four. I think she's got, I think she has five total. Don't quote me on that though. And I tried very hard not to pay attention to the colors because you can pretty easily just change any of the colors. They're all monochromatic. So I could choose anything and just change it up. And blue's my favorite color. So chances are I would change whatever I design I chose into a blue. So... I think that I chose this because I like the design. However, my decision may have been skewed by the fact that it's already blue. I don't really know. Maybe I should have just 
somehow made them all black and white or something and looked at them. But I, I think I like that design more than the fact that it's just blue. I think so. Anyways, Arlene, if you're watching this, thank you so, so much. I can't wait to try canvas work with it. And your note was so sweet, and it was very sweet of you. She sent some canvas with it. I don't know if she does that every time, but that was extremely sweet of you. I wasn't expecting to get any canvas with it. So I, I can't wait to try it. I can't wait to try it. All right. That should conclude my haul. Okay, next up, I have a couple FFOs. Yay! I have three since the last time that I spoke to you guys, but one of them I've already given away. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the one that I've given away and I don't have anymore, which would be No Face. I gave him to my friend. I'll put a picture of him up here in case you haven't seen him. I gave him to my friend Haley. She, uh, her graduation date was... January 23rd, I want to say, uh, from the program that she's in. So I had it done by that date. I was going to take it to graduation, but it turns out that she isn't qualified yet. She So the way that it works uh, is that your graduation date is set, but if you haven't completed all the requirements yet, you which is not any fault of yours necessarily, but it just kind of depends on scheduling. But the graduation date set, but you may not actually be done with the program until later. So her graduation date, I was going to take this to graduation. I was going to give it to her. It was going to be super cute. And then she, uh, her one of her final events was on the day of graduation, during graduation. So she didn't end up going. So I didn't end up going because it was a Friday morning and I would have to fight rush hour traffic to get to where the graduation was. So I wasn't going to do that. She wasn't going to be there. So I ended up giving it to her, I think last weekend is when I stopped by and gave it to her. And I think she really loved it. I, I really truly do think that she loved it. I kind of tried to not be weird about it, but tell her that... If someday she decides that it's not for her anymore and she doesn't want it in her house anymore and things like that, that's fine. It would be more, I tried to tell her it would be more insulting to me if she gave it to Goodwill or something than if she just gave it back to me. So I asked her if she would pretty please. If she ever didn't want it anymore, it wouldn't hurt my feelings and just let me know and I would, I would get it back from her because... It really would hurt me to see it, you know, just be thrown away or given away to someone who wouldn't love it. I would love it. I would hang it on my wall. I do love it. It was really hard to give it up. So I tried to convey that in as least awkward way as I could, but I don't know. I hope it came across okay. I think she really did love it, which is nice. The second FFO that I have is my Legendary Creature style, which I showed you finished last time, and I went and got it framed. So, here it is. Ah. Yay! I love it. I love this frame. So, I put a poll on Instagram with two separate frames, this was one of them, and I will say the majority of people chose the other frame. It was kind of darker and it had a little bit of, I don't know, pattern or something right here. And I most, most people that commented liked the other one better, but every single one of my family members that commented preferred this one. And the one who matters the most will be the one who has to look at this for the longest is my husband. And he preferred this one. So I figured it was kind of, although most people like the other, I don't know. It was so uncanny. Literally every family member, my stepmom, my husband's sisters, my husband's mom, anyone who's a family member, my aunt, 
they like this one better even though everyone else on here seemed to like the other. So, I chose this one. I think it, I mean, I like it a lot. It That's why it was one of the options. I think it, this kind of crazy design in the wood up here, it makes me think of, I don't know. I think it goes well with the legendary creatures. It reminds me of something rustic, kind of in the woods and old and worm eaten and like a lot of these creatures that would be out in the wild especially I mean think of Bigfoot like he's out in the forest and there's gonna be all this kind of crazy shapes out there I don't know it reminded me of what most of these creatures would think of as home so I liked it and it goes pretty well with the woodwork that's in our house this all of the doors in our house are, are this color. And we've got some other kind of wood features in our house that are all this same. Which I kind of like. I think it's pretty. All the trim, all the window trims, the window frames, they're all this. Which I think is fun. I think it's pretty. So it goes well with all of that. Anyways, here we go. And I did, if you want to see kind of a close-up of all of these things, you can go look at my last video. But here's one last shot of it all at once. Yay! Alright, and that would be Legendary Creatures. Oh, it's by Clouds Factory. <laughs> I should probably say that. Uh, it was a Legendary Creatures Sal by Clouds Factory that they did last year. And I managed to keep up with it. I'll talk more about styles in a little bit and how I feel about them, but okay, here's another style. Um, and it is the Harry Potter class schedule style by Armada Designs. And I actually FFO'd it this morning because I couldn't possibly make a floss tube video without having it FFO'd for you guys. So I had to work it out this morning. I've had all this stuff for it since pretty much my last floss tube video, which would have been five weeks ago. And I've just been putting it off and putting it off, putting it off. And then I just had to do it today for you guys. So I hope you like it. It was a pain in my butt. I don't think I'll ever finish anything like this again because it was terrible. I would probably know how to do it better now, but I really didn't have fun doing it. And I was off my game this morning. The fusible that I put on the back of the piece, I had to cut it three times I almost ran out of fusible interfacing because I I cut it the wrong width the first time and then I cut it the wrong length and I normally I live by the motto measure twice cut once and I try to use I count it out on the little grid once and then I use math to try to make sure that I'm you know adding the right number I'll start like um on my mat I'll start at two inches or whatever and I'll be cutting 15 inches so I'll go ahead and add 15 and make sure that I'm cutting at the 17 but then I'll also count them I know it's redundant measure twice cut once because you don't want to screw up your fabric but I managed to screw it up twice in a row this morning anyways it was it was a lot but without any further ado here it is here we go look at the little tassels Makes me think of McKenna. Little dangly tassels. But anyways, uh, yeah, I finished it in this tapestry finish with this cording around it that I got at Joann's. So if you see, it's all cording. And then I've got this sweet little tassely business going on the bottom with the beads, which I think is super cute. Also got it at Joann's. And then... Um, on the back, oh, I'll show you the backing fabric. I thought it was super cute. Fantastic beasts and where to find them. I figured, you know, I've got this uh, Care of Magical Creatures down here. So it's fine to have Fantastic Beasts and where to find them on the back, right? Right. I think this fabric's super cute. But if you see up here, I've got a little pouch. I have a little dowel that my husband is cutting for me to the right size so that um, I can hang it on the wall and it will be kind of like just a little tapestry. Now, 
I, there's a guy uh, where I live here who goes to the farmer's market who whittles wands. And I was trying to think of a way to incorporate a wand into this. My husband thought that I should have it, you know, with little loops on the top and then hang it from the wand, kind of like this is hanging from this curtain rod up here, but only have, instead of a curtain rod, have a wand, which I think is a super cute idea, but I didn't want the loops. So I'm still trying to figure out a way to hang this on my wall and have the wand next to it and maybe look, make it look like the wand is making the schedule come out of the air or something cute like that. If anyone has any super good ideas about that, please let me know. Uh, yeah. When I was in California visiting my sister-in-law last October, which I talked about in I think flossing video number two, we went to Harry Potter World, which was super exciting, and we went to Ollivander's, which was also amazing. But they don't have any price tags on any of the wands in there. And I thought it was going to be super awesome to buy one of those super sweet wands where you walk around Diagon Alley and you can stand in front of things and say a spell and move your wand and it makes things happen. That would be so freaking sweet. However, those wands, there was no price tags and we both picked out a wand and we spent a freaking hour reading all the attributes of every single wand in there so that we could choose the perfect one for our personalities. I don't remember which one I landed on for myself because I changed my mind probably 50 times. And then, so I landed on a wand eventually. We stood in line and we realized once we started getting closer and hearing the price, they were like $60 or $70. And I'm sorry, but it just wasn't worth $60, $70 to me to have a wand that I would be able to walk around and interact with things for, for about a couple hours probably that one single day and be able to bring it home and put it on my wall. I, I was going to buy it and then put it on this piece because I've had this finishing idea for a long time. It wasn't worth it. I'm sorry it wasn't. And then I thought about it. If you guys have ever been there, what they do is they put you in this room and you go through this whole show where Ollivander chooses a child from the crowd and you stand there and he chooses the wand for them. And then at the end, he gives the child the wand. You know what they do? They make the parents pay for that wand. They give them a discount, I think, but the parents have to pay for the wand. I think that's a little bit scummy. It's just my opinion, but I do think it's a little bit scummy. If you're going to go through this whole process, make a child want the wand. I mean, it's a great strategy for selling those things. But that's kind of crazy. Because what parent is going to have their kid have a wand selected for them? And then the kid is going to want to keep it. Of course, they're going to want to keep it. I would want to keep it. I would probably have paid for it if they had chosen me to have my wand picked out for me. But of course, they didn't because I'm too old for that. I may or may not be bitter about being too old for Ollivander to pick a wand for me. But anyways, I don't even know how I got there. How did I get there, guys? Whatever it was, here you go. This is my finish, tassels. I think it turned out super cute. I can't wait to put it on my wall. Tell me about wand ideas, guys. I need them. I need help. All right. That was my FFOs. Yay. So let's talk for a minute, guys. Let's talk for a minute about this Stitch Night Challenge. Michelle, farm girl, you got everyone going crazy about the Stitch Night Challenge. And I like me a bandwagon. I jump on them part of my nature I like to say that I don't you know there's certain things that when everyone loves them I steer clear of it because I'm like I don't want to like what everyone else likes that makes me less unique but for whatever reason the cross stitch bandwagons I'm gonna jump on all of them which is just I don't know maybe it's good maybe it's bad you can hold your own opinions but of course I'm jumping on the stitch nine, stitch nine bandwagon so here we go. I'm going to show you my nine. 
my stitch nine. Am I going to finish all of them? I'm going to try. I picked some of them that I've been not working on because they're maybe not my favorite but I still think that I'll love them when they're done I just don't want to work on them so I'll I'll get to those when I get to those here's the first one ready it's Little House Needleworks I think it's four corners it was sold in three separate parts with the flosses included in each this is what it looks like case that's what it looks like I think it's very cute I like the weather vane I do Julie Gulf Coast it's a weather vane you don't have this you probably should I think this lighthouse is cute I just think it's overall very cute but here's what happened here's my start And this fabric, let me see if the tag's on it. I didn't even iron this one for you guys, I'm sorry. I don't even have a thing on it anymore. But this fabric is called Dill, and I don't remember who makes it. But it's called Dill. And when I ordered it, I didn't think it was going to be orange. I don't like orange, people. It's one of my least favorite colors. Actually, probably my very least favorite color. I just don't like it. This fabric... It's not showing very well on here. There you go. Maybe you can tell. It is orange. I didn't think it was going to be. I ordered it off of 1, 2, 3 stitch. I thought it was going to be a nice tan with maybe a little bit of a copper hint. Nope. Orange. Straight orange. So, I think that's why I haven't been working on it. I think it'll look really good when it's done. And I still think that it's a very cute pattern. But... So I put it on my stitch nine so that hopefully I get motivated to finish it because I think when I'm done, depending on how I finish it, I can mute the orangeness of it and I will love it. But I just need to make myself finish it and stitch on it. We'll get there guys. We'll get there. Hopefully the stitch nine thing will motivate me to get it done. Alright, this next one's weird. I'm going to just go ahead and throw it out there. It's weird. It's one of those printed patterns, so I don't even have a cover sheet for it because you don't need it. It is printed on Ada. I'll just show you. It's Monet's Japanese Bridge, and it's printed on Ada, right? So this is what the cloth looks like, and it's these people. Candamar, Candamar. I have troubles with word gu words, guys, okay? Troubles with words. But this, you stitch part of it. That's how it works. So when I picked this up, when I first started stitching, back up. When I first started stitching and I found my group, my stitch group that I go stitch with, there was a couple months in a row where these ladies brought in a bunch of things, whether it was from someone they knew who were who was cleaning out their stash and was done stitching and they just brought all of it and let everyone pick through it and pick what they wanted out of it or whether they went through their own stash and was were getting rid of things that they didn't want anymore. Whatever, there was a couple months in a row of that and so that's where honestly a good number of these patterns came from. Not the ones for my stitch nine, but later on when I do mania, you'll see a bunch of my mania starts. You're going to look at it and be like, whoa, who is this girl? She picked something out that looks like it's from 20 years ago. She was barely born yet. And I agree with you. However, I thought that they were pretty and I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money to start a bunch of things, but I thought they were pretty and I want, I, whatever, I thought they were pretty and I wanted to stitch them. And so I picked them out, even if it was kind of old fashioned or whatever. And I stand by my decisions to stitch those things because I do th still like them a lot. But this is one of those. And I didn't know that it was a printed thing. I thought that it was a full coverage piece, but it isn't. It's, it's a printed pattern. And then you stitch parts of it. So you can see I've done some of it right here. Let me focus. Okay, yeah. 
So you can see that I've stitched some of this up in the trees here. It would probably honestly be easier to show you the back to show you how much I've done. So if you see, I've stitched the tree. Now, what I realized while I was stitching the tree is that this is printed crooked. From the top to the bottom, there's probably three X's of difference. Like instead of it being perfectly vertical, it slowly creeps this way. And the same with the top, it slowly creeps. I can't remember which direction, but it's tilted, right? So ultimately, at the end of the day, when I get done with this and I put it in a frame, I'm gonna make sure the frame is straight with the stitches. So I'll cut off just a little bit of the top or whatever and match it to the, the narrowest width or the, the shortest height, right? Ultimately, that's what I'm gonna do, but that makes it so that the chart doesn't make sense. Uh, there's, you know, slowly the stitches get more and more off with the colors that are on the background. So if you see, I'll hold this really close here. So if you see right here, right? So there's the background is printed with a lighter green color and so then I stitch the lighter green over it. Or there's, you know, you kind of match, I don't know how many of you have done these before, but you, you stitch over where the colors already are. But they don't match. They don't match. They're off by half a square or a whole square sometimes according to what the chart, which is a normal counted chart. So I, I finally decided that I'm, I'm following the colors that are on here closer than I'm following the chart. I'm using the chart as a guide to figure out which stitches that it wants me to stitch over, but I'm following the print. And I think that's the way to go. And I think that if I continue doing that, I will enjoy stitching on it more and then I'll get it done. And I really do love that painting. I think it's beautiful. And it will be really nice when it's done. You know, the front of it advertises that it's much faster to do because you aren't stitching the whole thing. And I certainly believe that. But for now, it's taking me forever because I've just gotten frustrated with it being off. Again, put it in the stitch nine so that hopefully I'm motivated to get it done because I think when it's done, I will like it. All right, here's the next one. Now this one I actually like doing, but I started it for Mania last year. I haven't worked on it since. Here it is. It is hands-on design block party Java. I think these block parties are super cute. I wanted to stitch something copy themed since I live on coffee and caffeine. I can drink coffee all day straight until I go to sleep and I'm fine. I can go right to bed. So here is the design and this is my itty bitty start which again I didn't bother ironing because I only have a tiny little corner done. And look at this adorable needle minder that I have on here that I haven't seen since last May because I haven't worked on this since last May. I honestly forgot I owned this needle minder until I pulled it out to show you guys. It's super cute. I could be using it somewhere else, but I'm not. Focus, focus, focus. Look at it. Just look at it. All right. And that is that one. The next one, I'm going to try to start talking a little bit faster because I've been talking way too long. Here we go. The next one is a Mill Hill Buttons and Beads winter series called Winter Woods. And just look at that. Blue with a pop of red. Keep it in mind for later. I might have a theme in my life. Here. I'll use my notebook as a background. And this is my teeny tiny start. Again, I started this in Mania last year. Haven't really worked on it since then. But I hope to get it done this year because I think it's adorable. Next up, you've seen it. It's my hedgehog style. The one that I haven't finished yet. That Ginger Gerald has finished. I should have finished it before Ginger Gerald finished his hedgehog style. His hedgehog style is much, much bigger than mine. Whatever. 
I should have finished it, but I didn't, and I still not done. But it's farther. That's what matters, right? Here it is. That's the finished design. It's a realist kit, and here I am on it. If you can tell, since last time, I think last time I showed you, I only had this guy done. I think now I have his little brother up forward and Mama Hedgehog started. She looks a little bit creepy without the eyeballs in there. It's a little bit, little bit strange, but she started and I can't wait. You know what I can't wait for? This tiny ladybug. Oh my gosh, the focus is all out of control today. This little bit ladybug right here. I cannot wait for him. Also, I love back stitching. There's a lot of back stitching. I can't wait. I love back stitching. Next up. Oh my gosh. So this one. This is Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate. And I'm doing this as a stitch along with Caitlin, a stitch for mom, who you should check out if you haven't. I love watching her videos. I always watch them right away. As soon as I see them, I watch them. I just love them. But I am changing the colors. So here is the original. That's the full design right here. So uh, you, each of these little booklet things that you buy has two of these sayings. And then... Um, Lizzie Kate on her website has a freebie, which is the topper, and how to put them all together. And so, what Caitlin is Stitch from Mom decided to do, which I think is just brilliant, is she's trying to stitch. There's 12 of them. So, she wants to stitch one per month uh, of the year. And then, in December, we'll have a completed design. And that way too you can you know, buy like this chart I bought in January and then I don't have to buy another chart until March and then I don't have to buy another one until May and so on and so forth so it kind of spreads the cost out throughout the year which I think is really smart but my Christmas in my home is blue and silver not red and green and yellow and pink I don't understand pink with red unless it's Valentine's Day to be honest so I don't really get the color scheme that Lizzie Kate was going for in this I mean it's cute I guess but I don't know how many people do decorate their house at Christmas with hot pink and red I don't know I guess it's complimentary someone tried to explain it to me one of my friends they were like it looks kind of like red and it compliments and blah blah, blah. I don't believe it I don't like it. So I do blue and silver. So I changed the colors for it. And Caitlin had some really nice things to say about it. Thank you so much, Caitlin. I, I really appreciate it. But here is my color scheme so far. So part of my haul was the fabric that this came in off. It is Helix by Picture This Plus, And I'm doing it on 40 counts. So it's nice and tiny. Mostly, I just really love working with one strand of floss. And so it allows me to work with one strand of the floss. <laughs> So I'm doing a blue and silver conversion with a pop of red. If you remember, just a couple whips ago, I had uh, my winter woods, which is blue and white with a pop of red. I guess that's my thing. But I'm leaving the greens as called for. I'm adding just a little bit of red on everyone. Obviously, the cardinal couldn't change colors. It wouldn't make sense for a cardinal to not be red. So that was my red in this one and then I'm also using I don't know if you can really tell um I don't think you can tell but these rules in this star and these snowflakes I used DMC Etoile oh you can kind of see in these like little single stitches you can kind of see it there so it is a little bit shimmery which is super cute I actually am really loving working with the Etoile threads they're so easy to work with. It's like working with normal DMC to me, which is pretty cool because it gives you just a slight shimmer on your colors, and I, I just, I'm really enjoying working with them, and I think they're really pretty. So I'm going to try to put a little bit of sparkle in every month also. Yeah, like I said, the snowflakes, 
the rules, the star, and then they've got the single stitches. You can kind of see it when I tilt it like this. There's just single stitches, which on this fabric doesn't show up very, very well. So I put it in the 12 so that you might be able to catch just the shimmer, even if you can't necessarily see the stitch. <clears throat> and I'm loving it. I love that piece. I think it's super cute. Okay. Here's, I think, the eighth one. And it hasn't changed since the last time you guys saw it because, again, I don't know. I'm choosing things that I want to get done because I think I'll love them when they're done. I just haven't managed to get myself to do them yet. So this is Sewing Vintage. It's my old oldest whip. It's by Bobby G Designs. Super cute. All things that I love. I don't know why I haven't finished it yet. But here it is. Actually, I know why I haven't finished it yet. This hoop mark really bothers me. I'm going to have to wash it because you can't really tell from how I'm holding it right now. But there's actually, it's kind of like a dirt stain. It was before I knew that you should cover your work and that you shouldn't leave it in your hoop for months and months and months. So it actually is dirty on the hoop line. So I'm going to have to wash it before I put it in anything or finish it off. I think that's why I'm not working on it. But it is so cute and I really should just finish it. And I can't believe, I think I've gotten worse at French knots since I started. Because I did this little French knot right here. Right away when I started stitching, I did that little French knot. That is, I think, the most perfect French knot that I've ever made in my life. And it was probably the first one. Everything since then has been downhill. I used to be like, oh, I don't understand why people complain about French knots because they always turn out super good for me. Wrong. They don't always turn out super good for me. I got super lucky the first couple times, I think. Whatever. Oh, no. This is the eighth one. Sorry, guys. This is super long. Here we go. I'll hurry it up here. So, this is another Mill Hill kit. It's just a little tiny ornament. And he's a super cute snowman. And I like his little blue scarf. And, yeah. I hope to finish him this year because he would be super fast and easy. And he's super cute, so why not? Then my last stitch nine is my secret stitch, which I'm still not going to show you. But I do have it in my Q-snap. It's moved from the last time you saw it, and I'm going to do the same thing. Oh my god, focus. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time where I just flashed the back at you. Seems like risque. Like, I'm going to show you the back of my piece. <laughs> Like it's something naughty. But here it is. Ready? Very quick. I'm still not going to show you the whole design. But again, pretty sure you'll be able to figure out exactly what's going on. Here we go. And there it goes. And there's my secret stitch. My self-designed stitch that I'm not going to show you guys until it's all the way done. Because I want to make sure that it looks okay before I publicly shame myself. I'll show you either way. But I at least want to tell you whether or not it's good or bad before I show you. So, there's that. And I have one more. That was my stitch nine. That's the end of my stitch nine. All nine of those projects, that's my stitch nine. I hope to finish them all through the end of the year. My goal is to finish at least one of them per month, which I've already missed the month for January. But I think that there's a good chance I'll be able to finish two in February. That way, if I miss the mark some more, I still have a chance by the end of the year because there's 12 months and 9 is less than 12 because math and I still might be able to meet the challenge if I finish one a month. We'll see. So then here's my last thing and I'm going to try to talk about this really quick because none of you want to be visiting me this long. But... Uh, the next thing that I'm working on is I am working on the Tiny Modernist Biscornio of the Month. I've never made, made a Biscornio. I think they're really cute. I just haven't made one before. Um, and I was talking to a friend about how we were not going to start anything else because we have plenty of whips and plenty of things to work on. So we didn't really need to buy or stitch on anything else. And then a couple minutes later, she was like, hey, have you seen the Tiny Modernist Biscornia of the Month for this year? It's legendary creature themed. And I was like, 
No, I haven't seen it. Let's pull it up and look at it. And within literally probably two minutes from that, we had both bought the Biscorni of the Month from Tiny Modernist because it is adorable. And it didn't matter that we just talked about how we weren't going to stitch anything anymore. Because why not? Biscorni of the Month, super cute. We just had to do it. So we both decided we were going to uh, try to stitch these together. I'm already backing out on it because... Um, if I have just a couple seconds here, I'm going to rant about sows. I decided after last year that I wasn't going to do any more of these like mystery sows or you finish one thing a month, uh, because I had the legendary creatures and the Harry Potter one last year and it got kind of stressful for me sometimes because most of the time I was able to meet the end of the month deadline pretty well, but I always wanted to work on other things and I would just work on that first and I... Decided I wasn't going to do that to myself this year. But I promptly put myself into two of those situations. One of them being this Biscornu. And the other one being the Christmas Rule Cell. I'm not sad about doing either one of those things. I'm really excited about both of them. But I did vow not to do that this year. And then promptly went and did it. So, here we go. Next year. Next year. Or really at the end of this year in December. Here's the thing. I need you all to remind me that... I will inevitably join more things like that next year. So at the end of this year, when I'm like, oh, I'm not going to jump in on the bandwagon for any of these ones where it's once a month and you have a, a new part every month and you finish it by the end of the year. And I'm just not going to do that for 2020. I need you all to point me back, floss tube number five, about 45 minutes in. Tell me, Kate, watch yourself. You're going to do it anyways, so you might as well jump into December and not start the year off stressed out because you've missed the entire month of January because you waited to whip, make up your mind. Just cut to the chase, make the decision in December, get over it, you're going to do it. Kate, you're going to do it. Kate, in December of 2020, sorry, 2019, you're going to do it. So just buy it, just buy the sow. Anyways, uh, so here it is. Without any further ado, this is the first month. It's January. It's some cute little dragons, and I love them. I started on the back, the back of the Biscornio, and I have this top little corner done. Uh, it's, it's so cute. I changed the colors a little bit because, like I said, I don't really like the color orange. And this was a super, super bright orange. So I changed it to just a little bit more of like a coral pink orange. It doesn't really look like it on here. But it is. Trust me. It's not straight orange because I just don't like orange. I also changed the green so it's not super bright green. It's more of a blue green. But there's that. In the February one, if you haven't seen it, it's Mermaid's. Oh my gosh, the cutest thing. I almost died, but um, can't wait to work on it. I decided though that I'm not going to push myself to try to get one done a month. I'm going to tell myself that and then I'm going to get stressed out about it anyways, but I really would rather focus on my stitch nine than on this Biscornio of the month. I think it's going to take me too long to finish one, one whole Biscornio every month uh, and get my stitch nine done. So I'm going to focus on the stitch nine first. And then I'll spend what time I have left on the Biscornies. It's just how I decided I'm going to do it. But Anyways, I've totally ranted at you for far too long. So thank you so much if you've stuck through this entire time. I'm very glad I got to share with you. If you can't tell, I have a whole new energy. I'm so excited about this change at work. I get a couple months of normal. <laughs> and I'm so ready for it. I've been ready for it. Um, there's people who are built for shift work and people that aren't. And I think I'm just one of them that isn't. So I've got this whole new energy going on because I'm so excited about the prospect of having a somewhat normal life here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great uh, few weeks. I might be able to come back more uh more frequently for the next couple months uh more than every five five weeks because I have normal weekends now <laughs> so I might be able to make that work I might see you a little bit sooner than five weeks but until next time I'll see you when I see you
Love you.